Hello, welcome back. This is Jeff Byers and this is Andy255. And this is the introduction to rigid body dynamics. So we're going to be using the classic. Um, the video before this one, we just took you to an intro, introduction to it. Now we're going to start diving in a little bit deeper into some of the settings and options that you have. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and start with a cube has a ground plane make it about as big as the grid something like that and then we're gonna go ahead and create a sphere we're gonna scale that up to something like that and just move it back and then we're gonna create another sphere okay we're gonna use that as a default and we're gonna get it from the top view, let's go ahead and turn on the wireframe on shaded. We want to offset it where the edge is right in the middle of that, of the, the large one. Got the outer edge. And then we're going to get it pretty close. We don't want it bouncing around too much. So I'm going to turn on wireframe on here so we can see that. One thing about dynamic, rigid body dynamics, is you cannot start the dynamics with them sitting on top of each other. That will cause an error. Okay, so you can get pretty close, all right, but you can't be touching. So that's another little thing you need to think about is that they cannot be touching and in fact they will interpenetrate meaning that they will touch each other and then go inside of each other and then the simulation will stop and error out so once that error is out you're done you have to start again All right the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on a cube it's a basic cube and again um, this will be um, a dynamic rigid body again because we cannot have two uh, bodies that are touching each other so just have it just above it and we'll pull this one away something like that okay so now we're ready to get everything simulated but before we do that we have to save our scene okay so this is going to be intro to dynamics two let's just call that um two b there we go all right so next thing we're going to do is just select everything delete by type history and freeze transformations okay so we're going to click on the ground plane shift select the larger sphere and we're going to go to fields and solvers and we're going to go to passive rigid body okay under legacy rigid bodies okay there we go and then we're going to click on that ball and let's go ahead and click on the cube and let's go to fields and solvers under legacy rigid bodies we're going to go to active rigid body there we go Okay, great. And then these two, we're going to add a gravity. So field solvers, gravity, make sure you reset everything, and create. And everything should be set up in our settings and preferences. Okay. So again, we want to make sure that's set up to 24 times 2. Okay. For dynamics, um, rigid bodies. It tends to play in real time. There we go. So let's go ahead and play it. There we go. Okay, we need to set this at somewhere around 400. So I'm going to go down to the the bar, the bottom bar, and just type in 400. Right in these little areas here. Now we'll set it all up. Let's go ahead and play the simulation. All right. So now you can see that the ball's rolling around. Okay, it's not really stopping. Okay, so take a look at it in wireframe. So let's put wireframe on shaded. Okay. So the reason why you would use dynamics instead of keyframing that, can you imagine how hard that would to keyframe 
um, all of that to make it look realistic like this. You'd have to keyframe the rotation of the ball. That's why dynamics, rigid body dynamics are amazing and you can use them in your animations. Okay, instead of um, animate, animating this by hand, the ball rolling, you could do dynamics, which is very cool. Right, so now the, the idea here is, like anything else, is that if you can control it now, um, or have some control over it, and change the attributes to make it how you want it. So let's kind of look at a couple of things here. So what would it look like if these were two steel surfaces, which means that they're pretty slippery, would it grab on to that? Probably not. It wouldn't bounce that much either. So let's do a heavy steel ball on top, on, you know. So you have to think about the materials too, right? So when you're doing a simulation, you have to think about how they're created, um, what kind of surface does it have? What if these are two pieces of solid glass, right? So that would be pretty hard, all right? Wouldn't be much bounce at all. Maybe there would be a lot of bounce, but it would be very small bounces, right? So, but it's very heavy, all right? So would it hit it and then r roll against it? Maybe at first, but then it would slide off, right? So let's go to that, to that smaller sphere and do a control A. And let's go to rigid body three and let's take a look at some of this stuff. So this is a a larger sphere than that cube, okay? So this should have a mass of something like two. Okay. I'm not gonna worry about the center of mass, I'll just leave that alone. So um if I go in here, static friction, uh like we said, they work together. So let's say there's no static friction at all. That means it's just going to slide off of each other. It means it'd be like this was a piece of ice, round piece of ice, and this was a round piece of ice. Okay. And let's turn the the bounciness to something like 0.15. There we go. And then the dampening, uh, if we keep it at zero, that means it's going to roll forever. Okay. Let's take a look at what, see what we have so far. Okay. right so if we look at this cube okay the mass is one that means when the ball hits the cube that means it's going to push it over okay which it did let's do it like at um let's go let's play the simulation one more time so you got an idea what's happening here and just kind of keep in mind how long it takes for that ball to hit it let's go back again and let's turn that halfway 0.5 half of the mass as it was before. So basically this ball would push it farther, right? It should. Let's see if it correctly simulates that, and it does. So you can see it pushes it a lot farther. All right, so with a bounciness of 0.15, that means it doesn't hardly bounce at all. Okay, maybe once, right? So let's take that up a little bit farther, or down a little bit farther to 0 0.05. Okay, and it should have hardly any bounce at all, if any. Yep. So it's getting heavier now. All right. Now, we want that, because if it wasn't for the cube, it, to stop it, the ball would just roll and roll and roll because the dampening is at zero. When you turn the dampening up, it will basically pull it down a little harder okay so we need to have select the ball and since we want to have it slow down a little bit let's go ahead and turn it up just like to 0 0.5 right now it's just rolling and rolling and rolling so now we're dampening it about 50 percent and that should stop pretty quickly and it does look at that so that allows us to control how long it actually rolls. Okay. So we got static friction at zero, uh, dynamic fr friction at zero, dampening at 0.5. Okay, that looks good. Let's uh, bring that down a little bit more to 0.25. 
and that should let it roll a little bit more. Mm, yep, yeah. ran into the cube. Okay. Let's turn the static friction up to one and one. Let's see what happens there. And it does some weird stuff. Sometimes that happens where, oh, I went too high on that. One and one, there we go. And let's give that a little more leeway, point two maybe. And just gotta keep going and get it just the way you want it until we finally get to a point where you like what, what's happening there. All right. Okay, so you can see the benefits of this. It really makes a huge difference um, when you can control things a little bit more. So, that looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and bring it up a little bit higher and simulate it and see what happens. And sometimes things miss each other, right? Sometimes you're not going to be able to hit um, all your objects the way you want to. Sometimes it's just roll off the wrong way. Sometimes you got to move it over a little bit and just kind of, and every time you move it, you got to simulate it again and maybe it goes off the wrong way. You can see that that's kind of a problem. You never know where it's going to go, and that's just dynamic simulation. You just got to let it roll, see where it goes. Now you could use a field to push it a certain way, you know, you could. So if I wanted to push it towards that object, I could take that, make the, make sure you select the, the dynamic rigid body, and then you can go to, um, let's say, um, radio. Now I know that radio is going to push it over to the side. I'm not sure how much. Let's do a magnitude of one. And we want to kind of have it level with where the ball is. And let's just see what happens. There you go. See? Look at that. So, control Z back. Let's go back. And let's turn that down. Magnitude probably point uh, one. There we go. See how it's pushing it over a little bit? Look at that. It's even spinning it. That's pretty crazy. So it's just kind of spinning it a little bit. There we go. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, let's pull that back a little bit. <laughs> Alright, let's go back and go to point uh, zero one, make it very, very light. And see, there it is. And I can probably go in there and just give it a little more of a nudge, point uh, three maybe. And pretty soon it's gonna, it's just gonna look natural, and I'm pushing it over to the side a little bit. Maybe you want to push it over closer this way as it drops it's trying to push it it's not enough Point five. There it is. Perfect. All right, you get the simulation the way you want it. Go ahead and stop it, and we'll go back. And I'm going to show you how to bake your simulation. So, if you finally get to a point where you love your simulation and it's exactly what you want, and you want to add and you want to keep it. 
and you don't want it to simulate any differently um, you're gonna have to bake the simulation so what you do, you're gonna do is you're gonna select the active rigid bodies okay select them both and then you're gonna go to uh, edit and we're gonna go to keys and we're gonna go to bake simulation and go into the option box and here I'm just gonna reset I'm gonna leave it the way it is and I'm gonna click on bake and there it is there's my bake Let me click off so what I want to do now is that I've got that simulation that's baked in you can see the keyframes but there's still a simulation there okay so what I have to do to get rid of the simulation okay which bogs our, our computer down is we're gonna go and free that so we're gonna go to edit and we're gonna go to delete by all pipe delete all by type and then rigid bodies all the way down so that frees us up now so there it's truly run by keyframes now each one of those keyframes so this is basically when you bake keyframes your simulation will just keep going now watch what happens when I play the animation it's now being run by keyframes let's say I don't like that rolling around at the very end which I don't so I'm gonna get rid of that so I'm gonna go in here and just let it roll back a little bit so it's going to be right around 251 okay so I'm going to bring that down a little let's bring it this way there we go and you can see where the keyframe is okay so I can see how it's going to roll alright so I kinda of like that that's fine but I don't like the rest of it so I'm going to go in here and hold the shift key down and my left mouse button and drag it all the way across and I'm going to go ahead and delete it Okay. Now the rest, whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. For some reason, it took that whole thing out. Okay. Let's try this again. It touches that and it rolls a little bit. I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to go right click over it and go to uh, delete. There we go. That's what I needed to do don't hit the delete key. <laughs> Alright so now we're gonna go ahead and play that simulation and then you can see how powerful this is. Rolls back a little bit and then it stops. And If you don't like that you can always go back. Let's go back in here and you can you can scrub now because it's all keyframed. Let's go let's say it hits it and rolls back like that and the, I, that's that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead around 2.30 and then cut this or delete that part here we go so let's play the end of that I think that looks more natural there you go okay that's it so this is the end of this video and in the next video I'm going to show you how to use a passive uh, rigid body how you can animate the passive rigid body to get uh, the active rigid bodies to do what you want uh, something different and that should only take about five or six minutes and then we'll get into the assignment all right I'll see you guys then